Hey, welcome in. Well, I've made two videos on this Winston Marshall guy so far. And, you know, I'm not a Mumford & Sons fan. I mean, I've heard a few of their songs. I don't know that much about them. But this is an interesting story and an interesting story of personal growth. The first one I did on this guy was when he had his groveling apology for having said something nice about Andy No in his book about Antifa. And then the second one was where he had he had retracted that apology and said, no, I'm quitting the band. I want to be able to speak freely. And I applauded that. Great. And now he's going a step further here. And this is something that the left is really going to hate him for because he's talking about his Christian faith now. And look, I am not a religious man myself. And I used to be one of those awful militant atheists. I used to be somebody that I would have hated talking to now. But since then, I've learned a bit of humility and I've learned there are actually some real positive things about Christianity, and maybe I shouldn't be so judgy. But anyway, here's the headline. Winston Marshall says Christian faith gave him courage to leave Mumford and Sons after woke mob attacked him. Fear God and you will fear nothing else. And again, I'm not a religious man myself. I would classify myself as agnostic at, at this point. But a statement like that, fear God and you will fear nothing else. I mean, I could easily take that as just follow your conscience. So anyway, now he's done an interview with uh, Barry Weiss, who used to write for the New York Times, and and quit because she said it was intolerant, basically, and authoritarian, and basically filled with woke lunatics. So in this interview, he's revealed that his Christian faith played an integral role in his recent decision to leave his phenomenally successful band, Mumford & Sons. So as we know, uh, the woke mob tried to cancel him after he praised Andy No because he published a, a book called Unmasked that documents Antifa's political extremism. And then he apologized, which it really was quite sad, but he has uh, retracted that, quote, I could remain and continue to self-censor, but it would erode my sense of integrity. And in this interview, he says that prayer reinforced his resolve to leave. Anyway, quote, I was talking a lot to my mom and dad, with whom I'm very close, and I think who love me and understand me better than anyone and could understand the complexity of the situation. I was praying a hell of a lot. He then said he was spending significant time in the, in the Catholic Church near his home in London and how that led him to feel he must retract the apology he offered months ago. He said, my faith played a big part in this period of my life and actually the week before making the final decision, I was pretty much planted in my local Catholic church around the corner from the house. It's a bloody big moment for me. That's probably why after a while, the apology was bothering me like it did, particularly that I'd felt like I'd been participating in that lie that we already talked about. I couldn't square those things in my conscience. And I think that's the thing about Christianity is it is a lot about conscience. You know, it makes me think of, you know, give unto, un, unto, it makes me think of, you know, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, give unto God what is God's, meaning that your relationship with God is personal. It has nothing to do with the state. It's just you. It has nothing to do with your ancestors. It's personal. You are personally responsible for that. You know, it's not what your, what, what your group does. It's what you do. It's only what you do that matters which is one of the thing that, things that distinguishes Christianity. It's really an important philosophical moment because it's, it's it puts the responsibility on the individual, not on the group. And I personally believe that Western culture has benefited from this enormously. But anyway, uh, he described how the faith modeled by Soviet dissident and Christian Alexander Solzhenitsyn particularly impacted him. As Solzhenitsyn talks about the line between good and evil cutting through the center of every human heart, and that is lost in discourse today. I think a lot of people say, oh, he's a good guy, or F that guy, he's a bad guy, instead of accepting what I think is a Christian value, the idea that everyone is fallen. And it's back to the binary black and white, good guys, bad guys, goodies, baddies. And this is something that the modern leftist movement hates. You know, you're not allowed to see individuals as complex. Everything is group. Everybody's responsible for their group, not for themselves. That there are people that are just inherently good because of certain qualities, people that are inherently bad. We're seeing a lot of that these days, aren't we? 
I mean, there is a lot of value in just seeing everybody is flawed and accepting when people are trying to do their best. But that requires humility because you have to accept that you yourself are flawed. And the left really, really hates that. They don't like that at all. This is why we have things like lived experience trumping like actual objective history, right? Because that would require some humility. But again, the left hates that. So you're just, your feelings about things have to trump objective reality because of the narcissism that is built into this modern leftist movement. Again, I'm not talking about like traditional liberals here. And things like microaggressions, right? Some tiny thing, you don't even really know if it's there, but you know you're offended or you want to be offended. This is narcissism. There is no humility in that. There is no, oh, you know what? Maybe I'm just imagining things. No, none of that. There is no humility in saying, I have a right not to be offended. That is narcissism, complete narcissism. I'm offended, so that person has to be shut up. They have to be gotten rid of because I am offended. That's not humble. There's no humility there. That's not saying everybody is flawed, including me. But anyway, turns out he was also influenced by Kanye West as well as Solzhenitsyn. Quote, well, if I can quote the great American theologian of all time, Kanye West, he said, fear God and you will fear nothing else. Uh, Marshall laughed. And I love that because for me, I do fear God. And I think it's true that if you fear God sincerely, then you won't fear worldly issues, worldly problems. He concluded, we're all fallen and recognizing that we make mistakes, bring back a bit of grace and good faith. And it's, you know, the problem is it's hard to sway people who've been told that they're the center of the universe and nobody else matters. And that the only thing that matters is their feelings right now about anything. So anyway, I absolutely respect what he's saying here. And his absolute desire to be an individual and be responsible for his own conscience. I think that's fantastic. Anyway, that's all I got to say about that. Please subscribe, like, and share. That really helps me out. If you just like to listen, there's the podcast, Radio Baloney. It's on pretty much every platform. If you look for it, you will find it. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.